Hi class, welcome to our lesson on special segments in a circle. It's lesson 10-7. So you can open up your circle book and you can write these three circles in your circle book with the appropriate numbers along with um, those circles. This will be what I will use to explain the three properties that we're going to be discussing today in 10-7. So here's the first thing I want you to notice. Um, when two chords, we're looking at this circle right here, when two chords intersect in a circle, Notice how um, when the two chords intersect, it really makes four different segments, D, E, A, E, B, E, and C, E. Notice the product of four times three. So the two pieces of that chord, four times three is 12. And the two pieces of chord B, D are segment B, E and segment E, D, two times six. They're both 12. This isn't coincidental. This happens in every circle when two chords intersect. Their products equal each other. So I would suggest that you also color coordinate these. If you have four different colors, I think that could help you out. A, E, this 4, multiplied by the C, E, which is 3. That equals the other product of the chord, 6, multiplied by 2. So their chords, their, their products equal each other. 4 times 3 is 12, 6 times 2 is 12, and that happens in every circle. So that's our first property that we're discussing today. The second one, here in this circle, here I have, a sec I have two secants. And again, I want to see the relationship. Maybe I'll give this one to you here first. If you take the whole secant, so from A to C, from A to C, that number is 3 plus 5, which is 8. And if you multiply it by just the outside part of the secant, that number is 5. It equals the whole other secant, 6 plus 4, that CE is 10 units, multiplied by just the outside part of the secant, which is 4. And the left side equals the right side. 8 times 5 is 40 and 10 times 5 is 40. Again, that is not coincidental. That happens in every circle. So our second property, the whole secant times just the outside part of the secant, that equals the whole secant times just the outside part of the secant. If you want to, maybe you could write here, it's the whole secant multiplied by just the outside of the secant equals, same thing over here, whole times just the outside. All right, and the last property is pretty similar to it. So now we're looking at this one right here. We have a secant and we have a tangent. The whole secant, AC, that is 12 units long, times just the outside part of the secant, that is 3 units long. That equals, you can see here, it's the tangent line multiplied by itself. The tangent line is 6 multiplied by itself, which is another 6. So 12 times 3 is 36, and 6 times 6 is 36. So the property here on this one is the whole secant times just the outside part of the secant. That equals the tangent line multiplied by itself, or the tangent line squared. OK? Those are the three properties you'll be using in your circle book here for 10-7. So now you can take out your notes packet and we're going to be using those to solve some problems. So here we have two secants. So when we have two secants, the property that we're using here, I just want to make sure I didn't skip one. Yep, okay. The property that we're going to use here is the whole secant times just the outside part equals the whole secant times just the outside part. So the whole secant from e to i is x plus 8, right? That would be the distance of the whole secant ei. Times just the outside part, so the outside of the secant is 8. So the whole secant times just the outside part, that equals the whole secant times just the outside part. The whole secant is 34 units times just the outside which is 10. Now we're going to solve for x, and that's our instructions here is to find x. So we multiply by distributing 8x plus 64, that equals 340. And then we're going to, we are going to subtract 64 from both sides. 
So we get 8x equals 340 minus 64 is 276. And then finally, divide both sides by 8, and we got x by itself. 276 divided by 8 is 34 and a half. 34.5. There we have our first one. Our second one, we have two chords that intersect in a circle. When two chords intersect in a circle, that's where we have their cross products equal each other. So this chord, the product, is 12 times 9. This other chord, its product, is x times 8. So, pretty simple, pretty basic. We're now just going to solve by doing 12 times 9 to get us 108. That equals 8x. Simply by dividing by 8 now, we get x all by itself. 108 divided by 8, x equals 13.5 units. This length right here is 13 and a half. All right, and with our final question for today, this is where we have a secant and a tangent. Our property that we're going to use on this one is the whole secant times the exterior part of the secant. That equals the tangent line times itself, or the tangent line squared. So a little bit tricky. Um, nothing that you guys can't handle, though, but what is this whole secant? What is the length of it? Wouldn't you say that it's x plus x plus 2? Right? The whole secant is those two parts added together. So the whole secant is 2x plus 2, because 1x plus 1x is 2x. So the whole secant, 2x plus 2, times just the outside part of the secant, the outside part of the secant is x. That equals the tangent line times itself. So the tangent line is x plus 4 multiplied by itself, x plus 4. So that's the geometry part of things. We set it up geometrically. Now we have to solve algebraically. And that isn't maybe quite so easy. But let's practice it. So solving for x, we're going to distribute this. So x times 2x is 2x squared. x times 2 is 2x. That equals, when we take x plus 4 times x plus 4, we're going to do first times the first, outer times the outer, inside times the inside, last times the last. We're going to FOIL this. So x times x is x squared. Outside, x times 4 is 4x. Inside, x times 4 is 4x. And last times last, 4 times 4 is 16. Let's clean things up a little bit, shall we? Left side, everything is cleaned up as much as it can as far as combining like terms. So we still have 2x squared plus 2x. On the right side, this right here can make 8x. So we would get x squared plus 8x plus 16. All right, let's get all of our like terms together. Notice what happens to your class. When I subtract an x squared from the right side to get it to the left side, I get 2x squared minus 1x squared, which is 1x squared. So now, class, I'm going to be dealing with three different terms, x squareds, x's, and constants. Whenever I have three different terms, what your strategy is is to get everything to one side of the equal sign and either factor or use the quadratic formula to solve for x. So let's get everything on the one side of the equal sign. Let's subtract 8x. So 2x minus 8x is a negative 6x. And then we'll subtract 16. So we just get a minus 16. And that equals a 0 on the right side. So now we could use factoring or quadratic formula. I would say factor whenever you can. Factoring is usually a little bit quicker. So let's try to factor this thing. If it does not factor, then let's use the quadratic formula. But I can do x times x to give x squared. A negative 16 could be 1 times 16, or 2 times 8, or 4 times 4. Well, to get this minus 6 in the middle, if I take 2 minus 8, there's our negative 6. So I'll put a 2 in one spot, an 8 in the other, a minus 8, and a plus 2. Now if I were to FOIL this, x times x is x squared, outside minus 8x, inside plus 2x, outside 2 times negative 8 is negative 16, and here 
I get my negative 6x. So, bangerang, I factored it correctly. This is the correct factors. So if those are the factors, now let's find our solutions. x plus 2 equals a 0, and x minus 8 equals a 0. So to solve, x equals a negative 2, and x equals a positive 8. I have two answers. Let's go back to the question back up here in our circle. If x is a negative 2, does it make sense, if this is a unit of measure, to have this be a negative 2 units long? I don't think that makes sense. Or if this unit, or this length right here, is a negative 2 plus 2, could this be 0 units long? Again, that doesn't make any sense. So this right here, we call this an extraneous solution. It satisfies the equation, or it, we, we got it correctly, but it doesn't satisfy the picture that we want it to satisfy. So x equals 8 is my only solution on this one. Let me know if you have questions tomorrow.